Luke chapter 15, um, I think it's verse 5 through 10. Who's got that? <laughs> I might be remembering this. I'm in the middle of the parable, so... Oh, we'll start at the beginning of the parable. Okay. Sorry. What man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine and go to the pasture and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep. say and I'm realizing I'm running out of time. Let's have somebody go to Acts chapter 1 and somebody go to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 1, who wants that? Alright, who wants Acts chapter 5? Alright, uh, uh, James chapter 4 and 2 Corinthians chapter 5. These are all like one or two verses each. Who's that? So first, let's talk about these, this parable. Think about what he's saying. You have a hundred sheep, you lose one. That's a big deal. They go after it. Woman loses a coin, a coin. Tears her house apart, goes nuts. You've all experienced that. You've lost something, ladies, an earring. Something of, of value, men, it could be just about anything. <laughs> I lose stuff every day. My wife is about ready to kill me half the time. And we go crazy to find that which was lost. And it is nothing compared to a soul. That same fervency, that same urgency, that same desire over lost property. We need to have in seeking the lost. It needs to be a desire. It needs to be an urgency. It needs to be a hunger. Um, who's got Acts chapter 1? Uh, it's just verse 8, I believe, nice and loud. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Listen, if, if you're born again and you're filled with the Spirit, you have power to be his witness. This is what it's all about. If you haven't been and you want to be, talk to me. Here, call me on the phone. I'll help you. We have that power, just like in the parking lot when Rabbi threw me to the wolves. <laughs> That power was there all along. I just denied it. I just I shoved it down. I, I didn't pay attention to it, but it was there. God's word is faithful and true. It worked. Every single time it's tried. Now, sometimes you'll, you'll sow seed. You won't see a harvest. Sometimes you'll water. You won't see a harvest. And sometimes you will be the one that is blessed to reap the harvest. But you all, the sower, the waterer and the reaper all receive the same reward. Who 
Who's got Acts chapter 5? Go to verse 42 real quick. I think it was Josh, nice and loud and clear. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus and the Christ. Every day and every house. And so the question is, I don't know, when should I do this? What's a good time? <laughs> there is no bad time. This is our example. Yeshua was our example. The book of Acts is our example of what we should be doing now that he has come and he has done and completed his work. Remember, Yeshua said, these things you will do and greater. Because there is a lot more of us to do the work that needs to be done. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Who's got 2 Corinthians? So again, fear of the Lord. We persuade men. We compel them uh, in uh, Luke 14, the parable that uh, Jenna read. We're to go out into the highways, into the hedges, big places, little places, out of the way places, any place you go and you set your foot, Go with intention. Ask God to help you and to compel them. Out there is where they are. They're not here. We've been a gathering kind of mentality for a, a long time. And, and, and mostly every church I've been, we, we've, always, we've always done that as believers. We want people to come to church. And yes, we do. But the idea is, out there is where the people are. Out there is where we have to go. Out there is where they're spending their time. Crazy amounts of time in social media. Instead of going out there and wasting time, let's go out there in social media and preach the gospel. Share the word. Compel them to come in. I asked you a while back to pray about Chavarot, the small group in the home meetings. Please continue to pray. Please make a decision and invite people to your home. I will come. Talk to me first. We've got to you know, make sure we arrange a, a day and a time. I will be thrilled to come and share kind of messianic 101 stuff to kind of open their eyes and blow their minds and show them what they need to, to, to see. Or if they don't know the Lord, I will show them that Yeshua is God incarnate from the scripture and share with them and answer their questions and lead them to salvation. And you will participate in that reward just as much as I will or anyone else who's ever poured into their lives. We've got a college right down the street thousands and thousands and thousands of kids and young adults coming back to campus next week i prayed about it and i've decided we're going to start doing outreach me and josh are going to go out probably next weekend i'm having some materials printed up and we're just going to go we'll Grab a cup of coffee, bottle of water. We're going to sit down and we're going to talk about the Lord. We're going to just hand these things out. It's a cool little business card with a, 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 a peaceful water scene. And it says, searching for peace. And then there's a QR code. Who's not going to be curious about that? What is this? It's going to take them to a landing page where they're going to hear about the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. They're going to read Isaiah chapter 26. I think it's verse 3 that we quoted up there. Where perfect peace is for those whose mind is set upon him. And they're going to be invited to make contact with us. The phone number that we've set up. 
email, the form. We're going to reach people. And I would love it if you would come with me. I know Bo Jr., when they come back, is, is going to go. Kind of drag him into it, like I dragged Aaron into the host. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, you can volunteer for stuff, or eventually I'm going to get to you too, like I got to Bo and like I got to Aaron. It's my job. It's what it is. Who's got uh, James chapter 4? I need verse 17, nice and loud. James 4, 17. So then, anyone who knows the right thing to do and fails to do it is committing a sin. If you know the right thing to do and you don't do it, you have sinned. It's not just about sins that we commit. It's sins of omission as well. We're going to be judged by what we have done with the word we profess to believe in. We're going to be judged by what we have done with the Messiah that we put our trust and faith in. We don't get to hide it under a bushel. We've got to let it shine. We cannot be passive believers anymore. I can't tell you how many church services I've been in growing up. Well, if you can't, you know, share the gospel, let your light shine. And just be a good Christian out there. And everyone will see it and be drawn to you. And that's your testimony. No, it's not. That's, yeah, you need to do that. That's part of it. We can't stop there anymore. It is not getting the ball across the goal line, to use a cheesy sports analogy. If I'm going to be quoting cheesy things, I'll quote, I don't remember who it was, <laughs> one of these cheesy motivational guys. You can do it! Because you can not because I said so, but because the word you hold in your hand and have hidden in your heart tells you so. I can do all things through Christ Jesus, through Messiah Yeshua, who gives me strength. You can do it. Quit believing the lie. I can't, I can't, I can't. You got a goofy blind guy up here that can do it. And I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, I'm nothing, nobody special. You know what the difference between me and you is? And thank God, there is a difference for your sake. The difference is, I have been blessed beyond measure. I've not always thought it, I've not always believed it, but I've been blessed beyond measure. And I'm not talking about anything financial, I'm not talking about material, I'm not even talking about my family. But blessed beyond measure with the suffering I have experienced in my life. I have been blessed beyond measure by facing 90% kill rate cancer. I have been blessed beyond measure having gone through a divorce as a young man. I have been blessed beyond measure having heart issues. I've been blessed beyond measure losing my sight I've not always thought that. They are precious gifts from God because here's why. What I realize now, and I haven't most of my life, is that it's these very things that make me realize in tangible ways that maybe you don't how much, how desperately I need God. can't take a 
breath. I can't have a heartbeat. I understand those things. Two and a half days, two and a half years ago, in Fry Hospital, heart rate of over 160 beats a minute, nonstop, 48 hours without sleep. I, I, I couldn't control the heartbeats. Medicine couldn't for a couple of days. I, I, I can't see anything in here. I can't see anything out there anymore. I can't go anywhere without somebody leading me or using a cane or having my dog. I know how desperately I need him. And I'm thankful that you don't have those same understandings. But please, glean from my experiences. Glean from what I share with you. Because it's the same reality. You're just experiencing it differently. You can see what I can't see. But you all still have challenges. You all still have stuff. Every single one in here has something. That's the only difference. Maybe I'm a little more messed up, and that's what keeps me looking up. <laughs> Zig Ziglar used to always say, if you fall down, make sure you land on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. 